Uh, thank you everybody for coming to this event today. Um, it's titled I Heart Nutrition. It's actually a word play on I herb and nutrition. So this is actually the three main speakers that we have today. Okay, but uh, before, and so let's get healthy together with the right knowledge, yeah? And before we start, uh, please be informed that the session today will be recorded and may be shared on our social channels as part of our future marketing efforts. Okay, and today's talk is brought to you by Foundation of Rotary Club Singapore or FRCS Learning Centre in short. Uh, we are part of a registered charity dedicated to serving the needs of the community in Singapore. Our vision is to be the chosen centre for learning to help upskill individuals, serve the community and promote lifelong friendships. Okay, and if you are keen to find out more about our courses and latest happenings, please do proceed to all this page. Uh, now is the best time to take out your QR code. Lah. So you can visit us at our website in this red box, uh, Facebook on this yellow box, and uh, this uh, YouTube channel, uh, this white box here. And uh, if you like to get uh, receive regular updates on WhatsApp, you can also add us into your contact list. But once you have added, be sure to come and say hello to us, yeah? because uh, if you don't say hi, I will not know that you have added us and you definitely won't receive anything from my end okay and so if you're fine keen to find out more uh yeah do proceed over right now okay and all our courses are actually uh nsa approved or national silver academy approved for seniors age 50 and above lah. and we all our courses carry a thematic focus on these five main areas namely the arts and craft healthy living uh active retirement digital skills and uh, hobbies and our fees are highly subsidized for this age group uh, and more will be covered in the later sections and if you are below 50 you can also sign up for the course not an issue it's just a uh, lesser subsidy lah. okay and next up i'd like to invite miss elsie chua our uh, frcs learning center's marketing and communications chair to give a few words to officially start our program over to you elsie Yes, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to have all of you join us today. Uh, FRCS is established you know, since uh, 1993 and it's the charity club. Uh, I would say the charity organization for all the Rotary Clubs in Singapore. Uh, we steer and spearhead various community uh, activities as we seek to engage you know, with the public at large, you know, for a, as a catalyst of change. Uh, through the years, FRCS has championed a wide range of humanitarian and educational causes that help improve the well-being of individuals and families in Singapore. Uh, we achieved actually the uh, IPC status uh, in 1994, actually, and it allowed us to consolidate uh, fundraising and service projects. Uh, and we also established, you know, a Rotary Family Service Centre in 1997, as well as our FRCS Learning Centre that is actually instrumental for bringing this talk to you today uh, in 2018. So, um, aside from this, actually, you know, what is coming up next is FRCS will be having uh, Elder Care and Caregivers Centre that will be opening soon in Bukit Gombak. So we at FRCS Learning Center is happy to continue to engage with the community through our series of free online Zoom talks. Uh, we hope to see you uh, at our center or uh, online, you know, for more of our causes uh, in future. So thank you very much, you know, for spending your Saturday afternoon with us again. Uh, over to you, Jocelyn. Okay, thank you so much, Elsie, for the quick sharing about FRCS Learning Center. This is pretty much what we do, and today's course is really part of um, the overall mission that we hope to achieve as well. Okay, and so uh, before we start the event, I'd just like to give a brief run through. So nowadays, with influx of so many information sources, you know, how many of you actually often receive health tips from your friend? Uh, you probably get so some unknown video sources, you know, telling you there's some miracle cure when you eat certain things and then, you know, it can solve particular health problem. I mean, while most people, when they share these videos, they actually meant well, but it's always important to know and understand where our information sources and, uh, is coming from, especially when it has 
a direct impact on our own health. Lah. Okay, so uh, actually now is the best time you can share with us what are some of the most ridiculous health tips you have actually heard about, uh, you know, from your friends or anybody that has shared with you. Uh, yeah, and also at any juncture, if you do have any questions for our panelists, feel free to share, use the Q&A function, and we'll try our very best to answer your questions in the Q&A segment later. Okay, and for the benefit of all our lovely viewers today, we have with us um, three, we have with us three, uh, three expert speakers to share some tips about staying healthy, especially during old age, or if you're taking care of any seniors within the family. Okay, uh, so from common eye care problems faced by um, seniors, shared by an optometrist, to misleading food facts for seniors, uh, uh, which will be shared by a certified nutritional with nutritional therapist, and lastly, learn how to incorporate some Chinese herbs, you know, those mysterious looking woody sticks, and sometimes even animals into your everyday cooking uh, with a TCM practitioner. Uh, but before we start, let's watch a little video about the possible causes of our progressive decline, and what are some of the healthy habits that we can adopt to correct this. Okay. Okay, go. From the minute we're born, we're aging. Constant exposure to our environment, the things we eat, and stresses from both inside and outside our bodies all cause us to age over time. Aging is highly complex, but scientists are starting to understand what happens at the cellular and molecular levels. For example, healthy cells are damaged over time when our immune systems shift from reacting to short-term problems like injuries and infections to gradually producing chronic inflammation throughout the body. Time also gradually shortens the telomeres that act as protective caps for our DNA-containing chromosomes. These and other changes make our bodies less and less able to deal with stresses from inside and outside of our body, so when damage reaches a critical level, our cells, tissues, and organs may no longer perform normally, and our health starts to decline. The changes associated with aging start to happen on some level at day one. We begin to experience their effects early in life. For example, we lose the ability to hear certain high-frequency sounds as teenagers. Our cognition and memory slowly decline after they peak in our mid-twenties. The strength of our bones starts to decrease in our thirties. Female fertility sharply declines after thirty-five. Age-related nearsightedness begins in our mid-forties. And our hair starts to gray and thin as early as our thirties and forties. After the age of fifty, the changes of aging become increasingly noticeable. And, because aging is the biggest risk factor for most of the diseases that affect us as adults, the older we get, the higher our risk of chronic disease becomes. While scientists have not yet found a way to stop these processes of aging, they are learning more and more about how to maintain health throughout our lives. Some aspects of aging are out of our control, like our genetics and our family history, but we can educate ourselves about moderate risk factors and do our best to reduce them through healthy lifestyle and diet choices. Most of us can be healthy and active well into our later years if we take care of ourselves. It's no surprise that regular physical activity can help maintain a healthy weight, improve moods and sleep habits, and boost overall health. And it's clear that a well-balanced diet full of nutritious foods is critical to good health. But when it comes to understanding which foods are the best choices, much nutrition research has focused on how certain foods or nutrients may have a negative effect on health or even play a role in disease development. More recently, scientists have begun to explore and understand how nutrition may play a role in promoting healthy aging throughout all of life's stages. We are rapidly learning about what foods and nutrients should be emphasized in our diets and how they can enhance our health. Diets full of fruits and veggies, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and lean meats have proven health benefits like lowering blood pressure, improving glucose control and diabetes, weight loss, improving arthritis, and reducing the risk of cancer and cardiovascular events, to name a few. And we are learning more about the specific nutrients that can impact health. For example, plant pigments found in bright orange and red fruits and vegetables may prevent and slow the progression of eye diseases. Calcium helps to keep bones strong. B vitamins play a role in maintaining brain health. And flavonoids from many plants may improve the health of our cardiovascular systems. 
The bottom line is that you have the power to maintain and improve your health, add vitality to your years, and reduce your risk of disease. And it's never too late to make a change. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. So, but when it comes to the right type of nutrients uh, and its implied effects, I think it's best I leave this to the subject expert, Ms. Catherine Koo, a certified nutritional therapist and the founder of Aman Wellness to share more. So after a health scan she went through herself, Ms. Catherine has since devoted her time and energy into the studies of nutrition as a form of medicine. She has been providing talks and educating the public about metabolic syndromes, prevention, and recovery. Additionally, she's also an active Rotarian, serving, the serving as the Community Service Director with Rotary Club of Singapore East. Over to you, Catherine. Hi, thank you for the nice, really in-depth introduction. So now I'm going to share some slides. So uh, to all the attendees here, just bear with me. Right. Can you all see my slides? Just give me a yes in the chat box. Yes. Because I can't see my own screen. So just help me out here and tell me that you can see my slides. All right. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you for helping me out here. So... One of the topics that I've decided to talk about today is actually about protein, protein and muscle mass preservation, especially for elderly and seniors above 65 years old. I will not say that it is misleading, but I would think that as a therapist, a lot of time people don't know, they are not aware that the elderly needs more protein to preserve their muscle mass. Now I'm going to repeat that, that the elderly especially those above the age of 65 years, need a higher amount of protein than a normal adult, 30, 40 years old, to preserve their muscle mass. And why is that so? One of the reasons is because of hormone changes. How many people is aware of that, that when you, when you age, your hormone change, and then it affects your muscle mass? How many people are aware of this? Just, just show me a thumbs up or a yes. Yeah, very good. Some of you are aware of it. Very, very good. So yes, as we age, and as you've seen in the video, biologically, because DNA, we will age. Eventually, we will age. And when we age, our hormone will change. Our growth hormone will drop. Our um, fertility hormones will drop. And these hormones, whether you are aware or not, are actually controlling our bone health, helping us to manage our bone health and our muscle mass. So as these hormones changes and drop, we need more protein, which is why 65 years and above, you actually need more protein compared to the younger adult in the age of 30 and 40s. Now, I keep using the word protein, protein, protein. Let me just clarify, yeah? protein is the nutrient. The food sources can be meat, eggs, chicken, fish. So those are the food sources. But the nutrient itself is protein. Now, I, just out of curiosity, what else? Protein is one type of nutrient. What, what, other, what other four common ones that you would have heard? Anyone want to try? Uh, don't worry, we are not here to penalize anyone. I just You can just type in what other four types of nutrient apart from protein. Let me see. Fats, very good. Carbo. Vitamins, minerals. Vitamin, yes. Vitamin is. Minerals is another type of nutrient. So yes, you are correct. You are absolutely right. So the common one, carbohydrate protein, fats, vitamins, minerals, and of course, water. Lah. Yeah, water is also categorized as one type of nutrient. Lah, okay, yeah. Uh, as somebody say multivitamin. Okay, multivitamin is supplements. We'll talk about that shortly. Magnesium is a type of mineral. So yes, it's also considered a nutrient under the category minerals. So again, I repeat, so under nutrient categories, you have protein, you have, you have the fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. So today in 20 minutes, I can only share protein. 
Right, so we're going to talk about protein uh, for muscle mass preservation. Now, the other thing that I'm not covering today right now in the short uh, span of 20 minutes, and I want to share with all of you as well, when we talk about muscle preservation, the other element that is very important is exercise. So the protein that you get from your diet and the exercise, you combine them together, that's very good for muscle growth and muscle preservation, right? Now, let's come back to our food high in nutrient called protein. So in the picture, you will see everything like in my picture, but I just want to show you clearer. Now, beans is a plant-based protein. It comes from plants. So protein need not have to come from all animal sources. It can also come from plant-based sources. So like beans, right? And 100 gram of beans, you will get around 19 to 24 grams of protein. 100 gram of chicken breast, you will get 30 gram of protein because protein is a nutrient, it's not the meat. So the whole chicken meat can be 100 gram. Out of the 100 gram, 30 grams is the protein. Now the other 70 gram is, anybody can tell me what's the other 70 gram? The other 70 gram is water, mostly. It's just like humor. Yes, correct. Diohua, very good water. So the other 70 gram is primarily water when it comes to for chicken or for meat based animal protein. So like fish, uh, it's about 20 gram. Now some fish can be higher about 25 gram. Uh, but in the case of salmon, for example, it's about 20 gram because salmon has a lot of fats. That's why it's an oily fish. So 100 gram of salmon, you get about 20 grams of protein. Then the other 70% is uh, water. And then you'll get a little bit of fats here and there. Right? So just to show you the rest as well. So eggs is about 6 gram. Now in Singapore, right, most of our eggs are the medium sized ones. Uh, so it's about 6 gram per egg. Sometimes if you can find the extra large, the really big ones, you will get about 7 to 8 grams per egg on the protein. And the protein comes from the egg white, not the egg yolk, from the egg white. But the rest of the nutrients are from the egg yolk. So protein is in the white, the rest of the vitamin Bs, the good fats, the, um, the EPA, the omega-3 are all in the yolk. So you get a combination. Uh, yeah. Now, most meats in general, so whether it is beef or lamb or duck or pork, most in general, roughly about 25 grams of protein for every 100 gram of meat. So that will give you an idea, yeah? What's protein, what's meat, and all, these are all the different sources. Now, those who are vegetarians or vegan, just take note that here we use a very, um, a very wide, a very wide uh, general term, we just say protein. But uh, in actual fact, if there are many, many, many different types of protein as well, right? So for plant-based, you will not get all the different types. Sometimes you will see amino acids. So in other words, for plant-based, you will not get all the different types. You will not get all the different amino acids. But for animal-based, you get all the different types. You get all the amino acids. That is why for animal-based protein, we always say they are complete. You get everything. For plant-based, it's not. Certain plants, certain beans will have this. Certain beans does not have this. Certain lentils will have this. Others will not have this. So for vegan and vegetarians, if you're getting your protein from plant-based sources, you need to eat a wide variety of food. You cannot just stay with one type of beans. You need to eat a wide variety so you can be sure that you get a completely everything, right? Oh, very interesting. I see questions coming in again like that. Okay, let me see if I can... I will go through first. Yeah, I can see your questions, but let me finish the slides. Then I come back to your questions. Very good question. Keep them coming. Yeah. Okay. So how much is adequate? So one of the questions that uh, people will normally ask is, so how much should a senior person eat? Now, the daily protein requirement is about 1 gram to 1.2 gram for every kilogram of body weight. 1 gram to 1.2 gram of of protein for every kilogram of body weight. 
Let's take, for example, Mr. Lee. He is 70 kilo and he wants to eat adequate protein. Okay, this is Mr. Lee. And Ms. So Mr. Lee has decided, I want to eat one gram of protein for every kilogram of my body weight. So how much must he eat? So how much protein does he eat? Yes, what well, else fast? How you know I'm going to ask question? I haven't finished my question. The answer came already, 70. Very good, right? Yes. So how much protein would Mr. Lee need? He would need 70 gram, right? So how much is 70 gram of protein? If one day Mr. Lee goes to a supermarket and buy chicken, how much do you think that is? So let's say Mr. Lee says, I want to eat. Yeah, wow. You guys are fantastic. Yes, so to about 225 gram. So 225 gram. So if he goes to the supermarket and he picks up one packet that is 300 gram, you can see 300 gram here, which means it's enough. Yeah, actually it's more than enough. Wow, I need to watch. <laughs> yeah, so which means it's more than enough. So that's what Mr. Lee needs, right? Now, the other question I always get is, yeah, Catherine, very good. Lah. Very nice. You tell me all this calculation. But what if I don't cook? What if I go out and eat? Or what if I order grab food or whatever like, I order? Then what? I go to the Chai Beng store and ask the guy, can you measure 225 grand? No, like, the person is not going to measure that for you. So what's the other way? So a simple way that I usually teach my client is to use your palm. Okay, it's not 100% accurate, but at least it will give you a gauge on whether you are eating enough or not. So it gives you a very healthy gauge. So you use your palm. I'm sure you all can see from the picture. And you take about this size. Now, some of us are bigger, so our palm is bigger. Some of us are smaller, so our palm is smaller. That's fine. You use your palm to gauge how much you are going to eat. Not another person's palm, right? Take your palm, see how much you're going to eat. And that's it. So it's about one inch covering your cook. This is for cook. Very good. This is for cooked. Yeah. So this is for people who don't cook and then they go and buy ready-made food or, or cooked food or they go and tap out. Lah. So this is what you do lah, roughly. Right. So about one palm. At least try to target one palm per meal. Now the one palm per meal lah, is good for people who are not very active. Now, some people may be very active. They exercise like five times a week. They cycle, they swim, maybe they hike, they climb stairs, maybe they even carry weights. Yeah. So some people would need more than that. So you, instead of one palm, you take one and a half palm per meal, not per day, uh, per meal. Right. So if you eat two meals a day, then it's about it's one and a half times two, which is three palms. Uh. Right? So that is how you can be sure or ensure that you are not eating too much or too little. So that can help you at least give you a gauge and a guide like, of how much to eat. All right. So per palm is about 100 gram of chicken or meat or fish. Right? So 100 gram of chicken or meat or fish, we know that is 30, around 30, 25 to 30 gram of protein. So you eat about one to one and a half palms per meal, depending on your activity level. Thickness is about one inch, right? Depending on your activity level. If you are active, very active, go to one and a half palms. If you are not so active, keep at one palms, right? Okay. Now, what I share with you today, right, just now, it's very all about just protein only. But uh, I just quickly want to touch on uh, the program that is being run at the Elderly Nutrition 101. So in the program here, there is, there is uh, much more things. So we're going to cover carbohydrate. We will cover carbohydrate in the course. And the carbohydrate, we also cover glycemic index, glycemic load. We also cover all the different types of fats, saturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, what's all those. Then we're also going to talk about the um, protein in more detail, vitamins, minerals, and a lot more things. Uh. And finally, of course, uh, the course itself is not all theory. It may sound all theory, but, so, but we will play a lot of things. We will do a lot of games as well. And we also do a lot of case studies. So, so what you learn is theory. 
But theory is theory. Theory is all good. It gives you a foundation. But sometimes, how do you put that theory into practice? So that's what we do. So we've done, we will do case studies, cases we discuss in groups or individual or together in a, you know, in a group with everyone. And then we'll look at this like case one, uh, Mr. Christopher, he is 50 years old, overweight, diabetic. What should we do? You know, and all that. Okay. So this is about the... Uh, Elderly 101 Nutrition. And if you, are re if you are interested to know more, if you want more information, please contact one of the FRCS Learning Center. I'm, you, can, you will see everybody's name with the, with the title there. Yeah, Contact the FRCS Tech Support or FRCS um, Learning Center person for more information. Right? Now, I'm going to stop sharing. I keep seeing all your questions coming in. I love that. And love your question. I'm going to go through, yeah. Give me a minute. I'm going to go through right to the beginning. And look at all your questions and answer as many as possible. And before I do that, um, timekeeper, please let me know. Uh, because I see a lot of questions. So if I overrun my time, because there are other speakers, to be fair. So if I overrun my time, please signal me so that I, I know how to, I can stop and then move on because we have other very interesting speakers coming up. So let me just quickly go through that. Minerals, vitamins. Okay, I'm going to focus on the question on proteins. Oh, somebody mentioned sarcopenia. If you have lack of protein, muscle deterioration, very good. Should we just eat egg whites since yolk is high in cholesterol? No, you should. By right, you should eat the whole thing. So you don't throw away the uh, nutrients available in the yolk, right? But if you are concerned, if you have high cholesterol, let's say you eat two eggs a day, let's say. So instead of throwing away both yolks, you take one yolk and you can set aside the other yolk. So two eggs, one yolk, right? So you can do that as well, right? You don't, have, don't throw away all the yolks. There are other nutrients inside, which is very good for brain health in the yolk. So chicken breast highest in protein. The examples that I show you, yes. Generally, generally, lean meat, the leaner the meat is, the higher the protein content would be. Yeah, so the leaner the meat, the higher the protein content would be. That's a general guideline, okay? And because chicken breast is the leanest lah, of all that I have shown, of all the examples. Oh, there's a big concern on cholesterol. Another question on eggs, cholesterol, and protein. So advisable for elderly eat this protein. How many a week is recommended? Safe for elderly you eat. Like I mentioned, you don't have to take two yolks. You can take one yolk and then you can eat about six. That means two a day, three. Three days, two, uh, three, three times a week and each time two eggs. That's fine. Uh, yes, you can. Okay, can touch on pork and beef and organ meats as protein. Um, yes, you can get your protein from pork and beef and organ meats as well. Okay, I'm going to go through the protein question first. Eating too much. Okay, I have a question here, a very interesting one. For, for, for one who don't get hungry easily, should we reduce the amount for easier digestion? Now, um, I am going to answer this question in two ways. Now, one is I'm assuming that you're asking about protein. Uh, if you're asking about protein, and, and yes, of course, if you don't get hungry easily, we, you can reduce the amount, but not just for protein, but as a whole meal in general, if you don't get hungry easily, you can reduce the amount and eat in smaller quantities, but more frequent. Smaller quantities, but more frequent. You can do that. A question on health. Is it okay to take too much protein? Will it be shown in your blood test or urine test? That depends very much on your kidney function. Uh, on your liver function. Now, for certain people, especially those with diagnosed kidney disease, you know that if you take too much protein, it will show up in your blood test. 
right? So be mindful of that. Uh, will it show up in your blood test? Yes, it might show up in your blood test. If there is certain uh, metabolic dysfunction or if there is certain disease, yes, it will show up in your blood test. Here I'm referring, by the way, here I'm referring to 65 years and above. Okay, a question on kidney issue. For elderly who has kidney issue and cannot take too much protein, what is your advice? Okay, that one, we don't really have much of a choice because you, the person already have a kidney issue. So there is a need to control the uh, amount of protein. It must be controlled unless the kidney issue is resolved, depending on what the issue is. Now, some can be resolved, some cannot be resolved. So it really depends on what the doctor says. Okay. Now, but from a nutrition perspective, you must control the protein intake. Now, one thing that can be helpful is to eat smaller amounts, but break it down in smaller meals, but over several smaller meals, it will work better than you gorge down the one and a half pump in one meal, right? Instead of doing that, you eat little bit throughout. All right, so that's the last question. Now, I want to say a very big thank you for your active participation. And I would like to hand this time over to FRCS Learning Center to introduce the next speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Catherine. I hope you guys have learned some really, really precious tips about uh, protein intake. Uh, and remember, uh, during your old age, uh, repeat after me, take more protein, take enough protein when you're older, okay? Not lesser, yeah? Okay, and next up, we have Mr. Ken Tong, uh, uh, the founder of eyesight.sg, uh, which specializes in myopia and ocular diseases such as uh, cataract, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy and with an innate mission to optimize uh, vision health and eradicate preventable blindness, his work can be widely seen, uh, including collaboration with Ministry of Health, the Health Promotion Board, and he also provides curriculum advisory to students at SP and ITE. So over to you, Ken. Yep. All right, thank you so much. Can you hear me and see me clearly? Yes. yes. All right, great. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for spending your precious uh, Saturday afternoon with us. You know, it's a great honor to be here today. I'd like to thank Angela for linking us up to FRCS to be able to bring this to you. Um, I think um, it's, it's really, really important that we, we look after our eyes. You know, we learned so much from Catherine earlier on, talking about all the kind of different nutrition that is important. And I, and I guess, you know, from the attendance and the kind of engagement and the questions that you ask, you guys are really interested in eye health and, and, and health in general. So uh, it's, it's really a great pleasure to be here again, um, you know, to talk about eyes. So I'm going to share on age-related eye condition. So I think before, even before we start, we, we, I want to throw you guys a question, right, on, on what is vision to you, right? Can you type in in the chat? I'll, I'll just take a minute because I think it's really important, right, that, that we ask ourselves, you know, time and time in a timely manner, what is vision to you? What, what do you think vision is? I, I have my chat open right next to me. Uh, if you have any questions pertaining to eye and vision as well, please, um, you know, Lina said to see clearly. That's great, able to see. What else? What else is vision to you? Can you all tell me more? Ability to see clearly, able to see well, can see anything. Dan says, <laughs> Bernadette says, five, six for both eyes. Wow, you are very demanding your vision, Ben. <laughs> able to see clear. And I, and, I, and I thank you. Thank you for the participation. Very important for better quality of life. As, and, and that's exactly where I'm coming to, at least. Thank you. Can see the moon. John, right? Just finished Tong Chiu Jie. You still want to sound the year, right? <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yep, I, I'm pretty sure. So I, I resonate to all of you guys. Um, so to me, I think uh, vision is so important. I think it's the most important asset in our eyes. And, and, you know, JC said to gaze into the eyes of who you love. Wow. You know, that melts my heart a little. <laughs> so I think it's great. I think everybody knows what I'm trying to say. We, we, we pay more attention to our, to our car 
you know, I always tease my 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 patients. I say, hey, you visit your you send your car for servicing more than you service your eyes with me, huh? So so what is up? You know, uh, we service our tea, our gigi, right? We see the dentist. We have 24, 36 teeth, you know, depending on whether you're a child or adult, but you know, we are, we are servicing our teeth more than our precious one pair of eyes. And, and to me, when it comes to learning, 78% of what we learn actually comes through our eye, right? And, and 90% when we are young. So I just want to take these 20 minutes, you know, this short time, and I thank you for spending this time, you know, to really inspire you, you know, to, to pay more attention to eye health, you know, to pay more attention to these important assets because we, we, we often forget them, right? We often service our car, service our teeth, our body, right? And I think, you know, Catherine will agree with me and later on when, when, when you know, our, our TCM physicians share, right? You, you, you agree that the health is so important. I think it is further emphasized over this period of time where there's COVID, right? So, so I urge everybody, I hope you are staying safe you know, but, but really, when we are staying indoors, right, um, we, we, are, we are paying more, spending more time using our eyes on digital device and what is going to be that. So I want to quickly move on to, to how important is there to take care and, and really what is the common age-related um, eye conditions that we need to look out for. There, there are so many things that I would love to share, but, you know, in these 20 minutes, what I would love to share is really about who are in the eye care industry who's going to take care of you, right? What are some of the common eye tests that we can do? And of course, some of the common eye conditions that we're probably going to face. So, you know, since everybody is a specialist, I want to tell you the three O's, right? The first O is an optician, Pei Jing Shi. They are the expert in fitting you a pair of glasses. They can check your prescription to see what is the san guang, astigmatism, short-sighted myopia, long-sighted, right, yuan shi, and even press biopia, lao hua. So they are, they are the expert in fitting you a pair of glasses. They can check your prescription to see what is your, the power that you need. That's what an optician do. An ophthalmologist is someone who finished their eight years in medical school and five years and more specializing just in your surgery. We call them the ophthalmologist. They are the eye surgeon. They can treat your condition, remove your cataract, you know, do your injection, give, of course, eye drops and drugs if you need them. And of course, that's me, right? I'm an optometrist. So as an optometrist, we are the primary care for your eye. If you know a GP, right? They are the primary care provider. We are GP for your eyes. We can de detect and diagnose eye condition, like again, cataracts. I'm going to talk about that later on. Glaucoma, Qingguangyan, right? Huangbanbianxing, macular degeneration. So all these conditions can be diagnosed by your friendly optometrist. It can be found in your neighborhood, right? If you go downstairs, if you go to an optical shop where they actually prescribe contact lenses, they kind of do this kind of eye health examination as well. So you may want to check, you know, can you help me with my eye? Can you boy? Whether you got any cataract or not. So you can go to an optometrist. You know, they are, they are around in your neighbor. They are around the community and they'll be able to help you with that. So that's what an optometrist do. Because a lot of people are very confused with optometry and optician, opticianry. So I just want to clarify, right? So these are the three O's in your eye care industry. So very importantly as well, um, it's, it's, it's a very good time to talk about how different eye tests is available because a lot of people are all very confused with that as, again. And a vision test is some, something that your child goes through in school to read ABC, that's, you know, they have nurses deployed by health promotion board in the primary school and even now in kindergarten to read that, to read ABC charts to know whether you have 6665 as what Bernadette talked about, right? So this is a vision test. A measurement of degree of power is called a refraction, right? So this is an eye test. This is also an eye test. And even this one is also an eye test. So how are they different? So this kind of eye test when it comes in the middle one is to check what is the short-sighted, long-sighted, astic and laohua you need to put on your glasses because of the changing eyeball so that you can see clearly. Everybody said that we, what is vision to you to be able to say, see clearly, see clearly and this is what you need to see clearly to bring the light to the right point in the eye. So this is what a refraction do. And the third one is called an eye health exam. What is that? We use different medical equipment 
to look at the different structure of the eye, if you see this picture here, it's a photo camera. Yep, we take a picture to the inside of the eye. Later on in the slide, I'm going to show you. We use this little machine here to check your eye pressure, yan xing the ya li, right? You know, not, not because your boss gives you a lot of work. Oh, I'm very stressed, boss. Don't give me ya li. My yan xing work very well. No, no, no. It's the pressure inside your eyeball, just like a ball, but you can check whether we have got glaucoma, qing guang yan. And this machine here to chuck to as a magnifier to look at the different structure of your eye from the eyelid to your pink eye, the red eye, the conjunctivitis, and your cataract. So these are all different eye tests. I just want to clarify because every time I say, Have you done your eye test? Yeah, I passed. Woohoo, why quite All can see very clear. No, it's this eye test that you went through. But then another eye test, I say, Hey, I passed. I checked my eye and degree. What check it out? So but now I can do it with my glasses today. But have you done this? So these are the three, three different eye tests that I want you to know. Because in a comprehensive eye examination, all three are needed. There are more tests, right? Talking about color, talking about depth perception, how your two eyes work together, we call that like binocular vision. And there are so many other auxiliary tests that I want you to know as well. But in this short period of time, I want to focus on just these three and a common eye disease called glaucoma. What is glaucoma? Qing Guang Yan. Right in the talk that I did, they say glaucoma. glaucoma is glaucoma. So in a glaucoma condition, your nerve is damaged. What is nerve? Shi Shen Jing. You can see this picture, right? This is the moon. Uh. Just now we talk about Zhong Chiu Jie, right? This is the moon, but this is a different kind of moon. Can you see there's a different picture? This is a nerve. And from the enlarged nerve, we get something called glaucoma. What happens when you have glaucoma? The pressure can be high, depending on whether it's a high or low pressure glaucoma, and your sight vision is gone. You see this A picture? What is left is a tunnel vision. Wow, this is scary, right? Where do you get it? If you have hereditary level, each one, huh? whether your parents have glaucoma, are you going to have glaucoma as well, glaucoma, right? So these are the things you want to know, right? But very quickly, I just want to share that sometimes a glaucoma, you can feel it, that is called a closed angle glaucoma, where you can feel your eye in pain. Ah, there are those glaucoma that you don't have any symptoms. No sign, no symptoms. We call it insidious. That means you don't really feel it at all. So which one is more scary? If you ask me, I think the second one is more scary, right? No sign, no symptom. Then suddenly you knock into the table, you start falling off stairs, you start tripping, you start kicking into the back of the sofa, you bump into your bed frame. You may be thinking, what happened? So this could be a very dangerous glaucoma called low tension glaucoma. No sign, no symptom. Very scary. We call it silent thief of vision. Silent thief. What happened in a the thief? They just take your vision away. Without you knowing, wow, I think that's very, very scary if you ask me, all right? And another condition is called eye-related macular degeneration or huang tan bian xing. People who smoke two to three times of this getting, getting, getting it more frequent than not. Center vision gone. Just now you see, uh, just now is center vision left. This one, center vision gone. Wow, got people call me, can I answer why window? Huh? Why, why, answer why? You know, because my, my clinic is in the community. I speak in Bahasa, I speak in Hokkien or Jianghua Yu. So they are all seeing straight lines out. Why, why, wavy lines? Why? Because there's something not right about the inside of the eye. Huang Pan Pian Xing. Huang Pan is where the light enters and focuses to the eye, the macula. If it's, there's fluid accumulation. People who smoke, people who drink, right? So these kind of changes in the eye can cause this Amsler chart that we use to diagnose macular degeneration to have center vision gone. Wow, this is scary, right? So what do you need to know about this? Do you know that the only treatment for this is injection? Tartan now, literally people need to inject, right? Their eye, just to slow down the progression of this. Another eye condition due to age, diabetes. Do you know that diabetes can lead to blindness? One in three Singaporeans have diabetes. We are second in the world after US. And one in nine diabetic patients have this thing called diabetic retinopathy. Huang Wang Mo, Tang Niao Ping Shi Wang Mo Ping Zhen. Right? The way she got all poor, there's bleeding in the tiny blood vessels that can lead to blindness because of swelling, because of fluctuating glucose. And you can see, like, so what can we do? Right? When you see this kind of picture, like, whoa, you see, you see this red patch? There are blood in, inside the eyeball, right? This is the nerve, remember? 
we can see your zing mai, dong mai, your blood vessels, your capillary, your artery, your vein. So what can we check for from an optometrist's point of view? So what do you see? I hope not you. Lah, huh? So what my patients see is that they have fluctuating vision. They have blood cells swimming around, right? So, so what can we do to preserve our very important site? Cataract, tiny tongue, right? This one is built up of protein. It will oxidize, yang hua. You know, our apple cut into half. Huh? If you leave it for three, three days in a, on a table, the apple become what color? Brown. Inside our eye, there's a crystalline lens. It will also become yellow. It will become oxidized. We need to be sun smart around it because Singapore is a summer year long country. Every day is UV. Yeah, yang kuang pu zao. We only got two seasons now. We can feel it in the day. Raining, not raining. Today we just have two seasons. Just now raining, now very hot. So these are the things that we need to take care of because when Singapore is in the real Thai Ti Chi tropical country near the equator, we need to be sun smart. Sunglasses, umbrella, and hats are needed. Right? So how, what can we do? What, what kind of cataract lens do we need? No, my doctor said I need to cut cut why more, right? Do I put a wow, multifocal, mono vision, single vision, what wow, wow, blur? What do you need to know about cataract? All these are, need, are all going to be said and shared in our course that we're going to have with FRCS. Have you seen this before? My dad, 70 years old, 71, right? My mom, they have this little ring. Can you see this ring around the eye? What is this caused by, right? Cholesterol. Right, just now there are so many questions about cholesterol and Catherine was like, oh, okay, uh, today is protein. I cannot talk about cholesterol. We talk about egg yolk, but if you take too much egg yolk, this will be rough on your eye. You can see this, we call it jiao mo gong. Jiao mo is your cornea. Gong is a bow, right? So this is corneal arcus. We can see that when you have high cholesterol in your body and you can deposit this ring around the cornea. So this is extremely important to know because a lot of people think, hey, umo, ah, umo, tige mo, tige msi, mo, ho, tige si, cholesterol level. So normally when I see this in my clinic, I normally order like a blood test to see what is the blood level. And then we work with, of course, GP, TCM, and of course, any other wellness people to, to help take care of your eyes and your health. And, and this is just so important for everybody to know. All right. So what else can we talk about in eye? We can talk about blue light. All right, I talk about COVID-19. Now we got work from home again, or home-based learning, right? So what is the blue light mean? Is blue light good? Is blue light bad? Some people say you need it for your sleep. Do we need to put blue light in the glasses? Some people say it's a marketing, marketing gimmick. So when I prescribe glasses, do I prescribe blue light to my patients? We talk about headache. Do you know that our eyes is part of the, of the brain? I repeat, our eyes is part of the brain. When we get headache, I see flashes, I got liang turn like disco like that, I can see stars. What are they? How come I, I see this kind of light? When I stand up, sit down, sit up, stand up, I got see this kind of white light. So how, how is headache related to the eye? Do you know that 40 to 60% of your eye, of your headache actually comes from your vision because of the muscles, because of the nerve? So what can we do to prevent all this headache? When we work from home, how can we set up our visual ergonomics? What is visual ergonomic? Our table. Can it go up? Can it go down? I'm going to say bye-bye to you because I'm going to put my table up now. Bye-bye. Why? Because I'm showing you that I have a table that can go up and down. Can we stand up to work? What, can, we, can we grow so close? Are we rubbing our eyes too much? Are we blinking? Can we watch TV while we work? So what kind of lighting? Can I put it at the side of the window? We need to know the visual ergonomic setup when you're working from home because we're taking for granted that we have an office and everything is there. But right now, when we work from home, when we work 12 hours in the office, now we work 18 hours at home, because someone got a handphone, right? What kind of fatigue level you're working at? What kind of work set up at home that can help your eyes that we can do, right? So now we have all these digital device. We have some feedback to say that, you know, work from home, uh, wow, I use so many hours of handphone to know. Then who asked me, cannot go out? Uh, I stay at home, I use laptop, I use TV, I use Netflix, I use Korean drama, I use handphone, I use Apple Watch. A lot of eye strain uh, from the digital device. So what can we do? Why is it that we have this thing called digital device? Do you know that when you read something from a screen versus when you read something from a book, it's totally different. You know, there are all these pixels. When you talk about frame per second, FPS, where you have 8K HD, 4K HD, all the light coming into your eye. Are these gadgets needed for all that kind of thing, right? What about the passion topic that I love the most? 
myopia, right? If you have children wearing glasses from a young age, right? What is the impact of it? What is myopia going to do with all that? Now that we have worked from home, is it going to affect Singapore? Is the myopia capital of the world? What is it going to be affecting us, right? So these are all topics that I'm going to cover in the R R FRCS um, class that we talk about. So I have three more minutes. I have a timer speaking right next to me, right? So that I know exactly how much because I can talk on and on and on and on. And I think, of course, Mervyn won't have any time, but I I'm just going to stop here. And I'm just going to cover some question with regards to the eye, right? So these are some, there are a lot of questions that I see, which I tell you, if you want, if you want me to answer all these questions, you will take really, really long, right? And of course, you know, we can definitely answer them all in the class later on. I'm just going to pick three questions just to answer you. But if your loved one is blind, how? Okay, Rhoda, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> but I think this is something where we, it's good. So let's let's see. Um, C40 number properly tonight. Hey, John, I hope you huat uh, tonight. But I, this, I won't take this as a Q&A. Uh, okay. So <laughs> is it okay to live with black floaters? Floaters are Fei Wen Zhen, Evelyn. Right, Fei Wen Zhen means this little line, this little dot that flies around. If it's not too much that affects your everyday life, it's okay to live with it. But please, if you have a lot of floaters suddenly, if you have a lot of floaters suddenly, please go to the A and E, right? John asks, can contact lens? I'm going to talk about it in the class also. When it go back to, can it go back to the back of the eye? The answer is no. John, our eye is a closed organ. If you wear it to sleep, it will never go back, right? Glaucoma. <laughs> How to prevent glaucoma? JC Chuang, you need to go for a preventative eye health exam every year. That's the only way to prevent. We need to pick up early because there's a glaucoma. I, I told you, right? No sign, no symptom. The only way is to pick up through an eye examination, right? What causes cataract? Cataract is caused by oxidation state of your cells. You need to talk to Catherine, go for her class to understand what kind of antioxidant food you need. That answers your question. Why some 40 kena, why 70 never kena? It's because of the oxidative stress of your cells, the amount of UV exposure, and genetics, right? So these are the things that you need to know. Can chrysanthemum or goji? Well, this one I have to leave to Mervin. Lah. Okay, so I have answered enough questions, more than three, right? So I, I got so many in q and I hope you can be answered. Okay, Tio Hua, since you asked, I will just break off more time to answer Tio Hua's question. Sorry, I have so many. I just needed to pick some. A friend shared that eye exercise can correct our posture. What is your take? That's a great question, Tio Hua. Eye exercise, there are two types. One is the TCM one. Do the Xie Wei acute point, right? That versus vision therapy to look at the muscle training up are two different exercises, right? From a scientific way of it, all these acute points from a TCM perspective, very helpful. But from a scientific way, because science is a very one-dimensional thing, it's very narrow. To say, well, evidence, not evidence. You know, a lot of the TCM won't agree with me, but they are very, very evidence because all the Chinese students in China, before they start their class, uh, they actually do the Jian Kang Chao where they do some exercise on this. So that kind of acute points exercise, helpful, but not from a medical perspective in an evidence-based way, but the one that aligns the muscles to help with 3D perception and two eyes working together, that's called VT, vision therapy. That is helpful, right? So I hope I answered that. Um, I hope it's helpful. But, you know, again, my time is up. I'm one minute away over my time. So, right, I will pass back the time to the MC. Thank you all so much. I will see you all in my class. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. I hope you guys uh, learned some really, really, picked up some really, really powerful IT care tips. Yeah? I personally, I'm very excited. I really want to feel like attending this class the next day, la, whenever it's ready and available. Okay, so uh, and next, 
let, uh, last but not least, um, give me a minute. Okay, and last but not least, uh, we have Mr. Mervin Chan, uh, a, a manager at Taishan Medical Hall. Uh, he's a TCM practitioner who has been actively in this trade for over 20 years. He currently oversees the manufacturing, sales and procurement aspect of the family heritage business. And he also uh, does concoct a whole series of uh, health and herbal drinks for sale and uh, distribution to major supermarkets uh, in the supermarkets island-wide. So over to you, Mervin. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Now, before I begin, I'd like to correct something that uh, Joyce didn't say. I am uh, not a um, TCM practitioner, as in like be a TCM doctor. I graduated as a TCM practitioner, but I do not obtain a license to practice. The reason, because in the beginning, when I learned this course, actually, I want to help my family business, okay? Anyway, it is what an exciting and energetic speech by Ken, thank you. I learned a lot from you. So um, let's begin with the TCM part of my talks. Now, um, to begin with, the cost in this uh, 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 TCM is actually surrounding around this concept, I call it the homology of uh, medicine and herbs. In ancient time, TCM believed that herbs and food are of the same origin. So in this course, what I'm going to introduce to you is that besides a lot of herbs, all these herbs can be used as food to make delicious soup dishes. All right. Now, um, before I begin, um, let's talk about some important uh, uh, TCM uh, uh, concept. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, uh, I take TCM to, to, to yangsen, to improve my health. I thought, but do you know what is, understand what is the definition or what is the exact meaning of yangsen? To you, maybe it's a health improvement, but to, for TCM, it's not that. There is a three basic uh, uh, understanding of yangsen. One is like can say, tell um, yang, you know, what I mean tell yang? For example, it's just like, you know, you're driving a car, you know, after certain times, you need to send for service, change the motor oil, change the spark plug, same thing as human being. Now, when you are uh, healthy, doesn't mean that you need to take all this thing. After a while, you need to take some TCM soup, uh, TCM products to maintain your health. This is called uh, uh, yang. okay? Now, the second meaning of yang sen is actually bu yang. That is when, uh, when you feel weak, you need to boost your energy. You need to, you need to something to, to, to take care of your fatigue problems. Then, you need, or rather, you need to improve your general immunity. Then you take some Chinese TCM herbs to bu uh, yang. But last but not least, tiao yang. That is when, when you're not well, uh, certain of your, your functions, certain of your organs have some problems, like you're having a cough or you're having a headache. Then you take the TCM herbs to take care of the same or take care of the problem. All right. So um, it's all about uh, all this. The three concept is about sun is means swimming, sun chun, sun zhang, longevity, survival, as well as growth. All right. Now to begin with, I um, in this course I usually introduce to my students. Uh, the different kinds of TCM herbs, or rather different types of the TCM herbs. Uh, uh, Joyce Lin, can you change the slide? Yes, okay. They are basically the diff three, four different, or rather six different types of uh, Chinese TCM herbs. One is the root and rhizomus, flower types, fruit types. And during this course, all these, <coughs> excuse me, all these, um, herbs under this different kind will, it will be introduced. Um, in my class, uh, I will introduce about 20 different types of herbs to in-depth uh, understanding. Now to begin with, we will have the root that like generally you understand, you, you know, we have things like Rensen, we have Maitong, we have Tangkui. This is commonly used in your daily uh, diet or even soup. We have flower type, you know, that's saffron flower, chrysanthemum, just some, someone mentioned about 
uh, can chrysanthemum and goji can use it for treating these um, eye problems. I'll, I'll address that later. Uh, honeysuckers, um, we have the fruits and seeds type, like the barley, uh, like the lohan go. A lot of people use that for their herbal tea. Longan, goji berry, cassia seed, all these are for under the fruit and seed herbs. Uh, okay, there is this BB types, the herbs. Uh, this is more uh, common types, like for example, jing qian chao, dan zhu ye, and this uh, mother watch is a yi mu shao. There are a lot of people have this misconception saying that you know herbs are all vegetable, they are all uh, uh, no animal parts, but actually, this is not. Some Chinese herb do have Chinese herb, I mean the animal parts as well as minerals. We have things like, for example, um, Di Long. Uh, I'm not sure a lot of people know heard about this thing called Di Long. Actually, they are dry earth worm. For example, another example, Mu Di. Uh, I'm sorry about that. There's no English name for that. There's Mu Di. Mu Di actually come from the shell of the oyster that can use it as a herbs. So, on, so together there are various types, you know, we have root, we have flower, we have leaf, we have uh, uh, leaf. So in total, it about close to a thousand of TCM herbs, we can use it uh, for the treating a different uh, health problems. All right, now, next slide please, uh, Justin. Okay, now, before I introduce or tell you about this recipe, I want to give you more, uh, more uh, understanding about what this course is all about. Now, before that, I mentioned that in the course, I will introduce to you the different kinds of herbs and different category of herbs. More important, I will bring along with me to the class some live sample, as I always mention to my students. To understand TC herb, you cannot just look at it or look at the pictures. I always mention that you need to be understanding from a three-dimensional point of view. What is a three-dimensional understanding of the herbs? One is that you're able to look at it, to identify it. Next thing, you need to smell it, you need to touch it, even you need to taste it, so you know what kind of herb you're taking. And this is very important. Uh, during my 20 years of uh, experience on the operation, I have seen numerous examples whereby customer they consume the wrong types of herb because their thought is the same. Or there is a times whereby they uh, have uh, used different types of herb for the wrong reason. That's why in the class, I will tell them, introduce to them, the different the, the, the herbs, the life sample herbs they can see to treat different problems. And, um, and um, in the class, also I will mention that um, the, the herbs that are introduced, how are you going to um, use them to make different kinds of soup? They are, we have, I have, um, introduce almost close to different, 20 different types of soup recipe in my class. So student can learn a lot from it to use it to treat different minor problems in their daily life. Okay, I even have uh, things like um, for different concussion, decaution rather, for, diff, for issue things like um, a skin irritation, things like insomnia, things like even I introduced one session called uh, confinement recipe. So a uh, student can use it for their daughters, for the um, you know, daughter-in-law. And um, also I will impart some TCM concept to the student to, to learn what is it all about. For example, um, a lot of people don't understand the, 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 the meaning of, for example, yin shi or yang shi, meaning deficiency of yang or deficiency of yin. Now I introduce of that because uh, I'm not sure whether you have ever experienced things like, for example, you have a night sweat, your perspiration at night during your sleep. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you find that your pajamas are wet, your pillows wet, you know, your bed sheets wet. 
Now, a lot of, a lot of people misconcept, misunderstanding that that is heaty. So they go to the TCM shop and say, I'm heaty, I need some herbs to help. But instead of getting better, they're getting worse because they think that they are getting heaty. But in actual fact, in TCM, we call that yang as a yin shi, deficiency of yin. Now, to understand how it happened, I will mention that in my class. Okay. On the contrary, people who are having yang shi, they always find themselves having problem with um, weathers. You know, wherever they are, you in the aircon room, in the office, if when they walk out on the street, they feel chill, they feel cold, their hands are cold, their fingers are cold, and um, lots of appetites. So how to use TCM to rectify the problems? I will introduce that in my, in my class as well. Now, I start taking teaching this course um, in the beginning of this year, 2021. Initially, the whole course is all about TCM herbs. After about two classes or three classes, I can't remember. I think that you know you can't really depend on herbs to Yangsen to improve your health. So therefore, I put in two additional sections in my class. One is uh, acupressure. The other section is called 十二十成 Yangsen Fa. What does it mean? Now, for the acupressure section, I will teach the student 10 different acupressure points. Now, this acupressure point will help them to take care of minor health issues they come across in life, for example, things like um, headaches, you know, backache, stiff neck, um, tennis elbow, knee pain, insomnia, anxiety, indigestion, flatulence. So uh, it's really easy understanding. I will teach them how to get to the accurate position of the acupressure point and use what kind of pressure on the acupressure point and to solve the issue. Now, on the 十二次四成 yang shen fa, what I want to do is that actually in TCM theory, they are to divide a whole a day into 12 different time segments. Each segment will rule by an organ in your, in your in body. So, uh, for example, you know, gan uh, jing, the, the liver meridian, the active during the time zone from 11, one o'clock to three o'clock. As I always tell my students during this segment, try to sleep before one, before one o'clock in the morning, 1 a.m. in the morning, because during this time segment, your liver is doing the repair works. So try to sleep early and don't miss it. That's how, this is something like that. You know, there are the other 11 segments. I will introduce that at night as well. So, um, pardon me. Um, now let, let me let me try to go back to because this is the first time I'm taking part in this uh, webinar. So uh, I try to get organized. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Now, um, just now I mentioned that um, during my operation time in the medical hall, I come across a lot of people, you know, um, buying the wrong medicine for wrong use. And I want to put a few examples, for example, things like, you know, I'm not sure if people heard about this thing called Wang Qi. It is called Astragalus. And the other one is Gan Chao. It's called Licorice. This is the two most common misunderstanding herb people take care because they look alike. Uh, if you are not a trained TCM herbalist, you will not be able to, to, to differentiate the types. So um, in a class, I will teach you how to differentiate and uh, you know, because Wang Qi actually is to to qi, to energize your energy, and licorice is for cooling. You know, for heatiness. If you use a different one, if you need to have, do need bu qi, you use licorice, you won't get any effect. On the contrary, let's say you need to cool down, you need to treat your sore throat problem. You, instead of using licorice, you use Wang Qi, you are getting worse. All right. Now let's continue with the slide. Let's continue the slide. Now, during the class, I will introduce to you a few uh, soup recipe that everyone can prepare at home. And uh, to begin with, there is this ginseng chicken soup, which is a, a very good healthy soup you can use. 
And all those herbs, you will be learned in class. Renzen, Fuling, Yizhu, and chicken water. Very easy to prepare. Another recipe that I introduce to you are Joycelyn. It is a steamed angelica chicken with blueberries. Now, this is almost similar to the one you eat at Hawker Center or restaurant. It's called Di Wang Ji. But it is slightly different. The ingredient is slightly more than the one you have and more healthy. Now, before you will see this thing, which is pretty common, Tang Gui Yi Chu, Yuan Sui, but there are this item which is called uh, sand ginger powder. Now, this is a very good ingredient for any kind of chicken dish. You can buy it from the uh, TCM shop, uh, probably in Chinatown or um, in this uh, uh, Sima Lu. Okay. Okay. Now, um, all this recipe I introduced to you earlier, and this one, Tang Gui Go Zi Zheng Ji, you can drink at all age, they know, uh, especially when you are feeling unhealthy, feeling unwell, you feel lethargic, and um, uh, yeah. Okay, next one, Joyce Lind. Okay, and this dessert switch, a uh, dessert um, menu that I introduced to you is a white fungus pumpkin dessert. The pumpkin is a very healthy. Uh, vegetable or fruit. Um, mu'er, hey, by, by mu'er, also same thing. So we follow this uh, recipe and you can, you can cook it things like once a week for the family and even for yourself. All right. Next one, please, Joyce Lind. There's no more slides. Oh, there's no more slides. Okay, great. Um, okay, now um, additional information that will be introduced in my class is that um, while I go through the different, different herbs, almost like 20 of them, if I come across anything that the student asks me, I will tell them the benefit of it, what is it used for, and on top of that, if I have any uh, soup recipe, I will write that on the board and students can copy and use that. This is, um, this is uh, something that is commonly uh, asked by my students during my class that, you know, what is it used for, what is it good for? And um, uh, all the answer, all, all the questions will be answered accordingly, of course. Uh, I can't address everything today, but uh, I try my best during the, during the class there to answer everyone's questions. Now, I have a few questions here that uh, let me take a look. Okay, how much water do you use to cook ginseng chicken soup? Well, all those ingredients there is, let's say for a person of two, usually my, my, my uh, recommendation that you measure 200 meals for each person. So let's say you cook the recipe according to the, uh, the slide here. For two person, you use about 500 mils of water. Initially, you can start off with the big fires. And after that, when it's boiled, you turn to small fire, cook for at least one to one and a half hours. Okay, to become two bowls, you can consume it one, uh, while it's, it's uh, warm. Uh, okay, how good are the pre-packed herbal soup sold in the supermarket? Uh, good questions. They are reasonably fresh in the supermarket based on my observa observation. Of course, now when you through the packaging, you can see that uh, the color of the herbs turn dark, then you know it has been quite some time, so you try to avoid that. Okay. Uh, can pregnant women take these herbs? Also another good question. During the classes, there are certain herbs there are a few acupuncture points I always mention. Pregnant women are, cannot use that. Try to avoid that because that will cause uh, 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 this, um, you know, liu chan. 
So think for example, you know, one acupuncture point that I introduced is called um, Hergu is on your hand. That, that one is a no-no for a pregnant lady, all right? Herbs, things like Honghua, also not advisable for pregnant lady. Let me see this, any question from the participants? Okay. Okay, how do we know if our body is more yin than yang? That is something I addressed earlier that uh, I will teach the person, you know, how to, how to differentiate yin and yang and when you're having yin shi or having yang shi. Now, basically all the herbs that I introduced to you, I will tell you that there are properties, whether they're yin or they're yang, or they're warm or they're cooling. So with the understanding, you know that um, when to avoid that, when to use that. For example, let's say you're having this uh, uh, yang deficiency, you're feeling chill, you're feeling cold for no, particular reason, then you choose herbs that are warm or warm in properties. Now, how do we know if a body is more in than yang? There's a few things you can do. Uh, I will also teach you how to differentiate that by looking at your tongue. For example, if you always uh, look at the mirror, you know your tongue is always in red, pink color, and it's a thin layer of uh, coating or thick layer of coating on a daily basis, or sometimes it's very red, then you consider yourself as uh, young uh, properties. For a person who have a yin, who is, who is more yin, now normally his tongue will show a pale color, thin coating, and um, what is particular that at the side, uh, he's slightly enlarged his tongue, at the side, you will see some teeth marking. So that will introduce to you that his body will, uh, is considered as yin. All these things will be teach in class as well. All right? Uh, thank you, uh, Rita. I mentioned that my class is very interesting and helpful. Glad you learned something from it. No, um, I know a person is asking, is the full day class or just seven hours? Yes, it's only seven hours. It starts from nine o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in between. It's one hour of the lunch break. Uh, the, what is the date for the new classes? Is next month, if not wrong, it's about 25, 25th of October. So you look at the website, uh, uh, FRCS. 23rd. Oh, 23rd, okay. Good. Um, yes, I strongly advise you to, to attend the class. It's full of information and I'm sure that you learn a lot from it and thereby to help you to improve your health. And of course, for the member of your family, your wife, your husband, your children, your grandchildren. Uh, I can't list them all here today, but in my class, I will, I will, I will tell you more about that. Uh, let me see if I have any questions. Um, Maybe, Mervyn, we can leave the questions for later. We have a Q&A section. Okay, sure. Yeah. So yeah. I leave it to the, the MC to, for the Q&A section. Okay, thank you, Mervyn. I hope you guys managed to pick up um, some very useful tips about Chinese herbs. Uh, and some of this, this, this recipe really sounds very delicious and nutritious. Lah. So if you guys do cook it, yeah, and you are someone who often share your food online, be sure to tag us on our Facebook, okay? Uh, it's uh, FRCS Learning Center. Okay, and thank you once again. Uh, help me just please express your thanks to all our three speakers for, uh, for this wonderful session today. I hope today's session has been enriching and has helped shed some light on health-related topics that you've been concerned about. So uh, I know some of you have uh, quite a lot of questions to uh, ask. So now is the best time. Please post all your questions on the Q&A segment, the function that I shared with you earlier. So uh, we have a Q&A segment later. So uh, I, I understand that um, Ken and Catherine have actually helped to answer some. But if you guys have any more, keep it coming. We'll try our best to answer as much as we can before the time is up. Okay, so now before we head to the Q&A segment, uh, I have some quick polling questions. 
So it's really quiz time. Uh, it's really just to see whether you guys got pay attention or not. And remember if our, what our trainer actually shared. Uh, okay, there's no prize, no nothing. <laughs> okay, but it's just for, for fun. Uh. Okay, so let's roll. The first question is, okay, how much protein should a senior be con consuming per day? Okay, so come, let's everybody, can you guys answer the questions? <laughs> yeah, can you guys see the poll? Yeah, y'all can click your answers into the poll directly. Are you guys able to answer it? Uh, I'm not getting any responses. Is anyone able to see the poll that's launched? Ah, okay, great. I am seeing one response. <laughs> we have 85 person. I don't think only one person will answer the question. Nah. Yeah, so, so help me track back. Well, if you guys remember, it will help you with your uh, memory retention as well. Yeah, so how much protein should a senior be consuming a day? Anyone can remember? Wow, good, good, good. I see a lot of people paying attention. Okay, I'll just do it for a few more seconds before we go to the next question. Mm. Okay, just three, two, one. Okay, stop. Okay, great. I see about close to 80% of you got it right, but there are a few that still got, still got like um, 0 0.5 kg of per per body eh, 0 0.5 grams per kg of body weight la. that answer is wrong la. it's only it's about one gram to 1.2 gram per kg of body weight okay the next question is oh i see some people already answer already <laughs> okay um yeah so the next question is what is the highest uh, amount of which of the following food has the highest amount of protein okay uh yeah i see quite a number of you actually posted your questions Okay, give me a minute. I will relaunch the poll, sorry. Oh, never mind. Okay, it's okay. Uh, okay, I saw some answers already. So for the second question, uh, yeah, great. Most of you got it correct. It's the chicken, it's, it's chicken now. The rest are uh, vegetable. I think I'm not sure which it belongs to, but potato and rice is definitely carbohydrates. Lah. Okay, and then for the next question, how often should you check your eyes for any degenerative diseases in old age? Okay, good. Most people answered um, every year, 81% of you, good. Uh, and about a few said every six months. I think you are very, very uh, health conscious like, that you all actually do it every six months. I, I'm sure Ken will love uh, people like yourselves, uh, people who come in every six months. <laughs> Yeah, okay. And then the next question will be, okay, which condition causes a buildup of protein uh, over your eyes as we age? Wow, okay, this one we have a more balanced answer. I'm not sure if because uh, it, 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 uh, I think Ken covered this just now, but maybe it's just a one-liner, so most people didn't catch it. But the correct answer is cataract. Okay, cataract. The film apparently is a thin layer of uh, protein buildup. Okay. And then last, uh, second last question would be, okay, which of the following is not a category of the five main types of the herbs dis uh, discussed? Uh? Uh, okay, uh, oh, we ask, did anyone see uh, rocks and crystals? <laughs> of the few people, the few 30% that answered uh, other topics, uh, I think you're not really listening, uh, but it's okay, it's okay, never mind. You all can learn more from Mervin directly. He can share way more uh, on his course itself. Lah. Okay, and last but not least, the last question we have is for the root and rhizome type of herb. Which one is it? Yes, most people got it right. Okay, so, so the correct answer is actually ginseng, uh, tang kui, yeah, and, and San Yao actually. Yeah, okay, so pretty much we are done. Um, so next we'll move on to the Q&A segment. Great, I see a lot more questions coming. Um, okay, any more questions? They only have two questions. If, yeah, if there's not much, I'll pass over the segment now to uh, Angela, uh, who will be moderating for this segment. Uh, if there's not much questions, yeah, we can cut the session. I short. think there's one new question for Ken. Is Lutin 
can prevent eye disease like short sighted, long sighted, etc. It's yeah, a new thanks question. Thanks a lot, Angela, for the question. Yeah, and thanks, TC Tan, for asking that. So, lutein is actually found in, I think, Marvin know, like, Koji Zi, right? Koji Zi. share with you more. Yeah, so um, can it prevent eye condition like, you know, short sighted, long sighted? The answer is no. Um, so it prevents very well from uh, very well from a scientific point of view. Again, some experiments they did, you know, uh, very limited, very narrow scientific way, is a uh, Huang Fan Bian Xing macular degeneration. So it does prevent and slow down the progression of macular degeneration in the early stage, but it doesn't help with other condition like short sighted or long sighted. Yeah. So the answer is yes but not for this condition that you name but for macular degeneration thank you okay i think there's also one question from mervin can help yes. can herbs be used to cure eczema okay for can you hear me yes yes okay for these questions uh there are quite a number of herbs okay the answer is yes and no now the no is that they cannot completely cure eczema however there is many herbs that can, can be used to alleviate, to reduce the discomfort uh, arising from this uh, eczema, things like itchiness, you know. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so there's also another question for TCA. Hepatitis B carrier, how safe is using Chinese medical uh, uh, herbs? Uh? How safe? Uh, for hepatitis B carrier? Well, I would <laughs> say that, no, really, I would say that it's pretty safe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. But right. nevertheless, um, I would like to mention this concept also is that we always mention in TCM, fan si yao san fen du. Now, when you say san fen du, it's not they are poisonous or they are partially poisonous. The meaning of this phrase Fan si yao san fen du meaning that every kind of herb you do not overdose. You do not eat beyond the prescribed amount. For example, certain herbs only you can take nine gram at one time, but let's say you eat twenty five gram or even four times or five times more than the amount, then you may have some kind of uh, uh, side effects. Can TECM improve sweaty palm? <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> okay, so there's another question. Is yin or yang tang good? <laughs> Is or what? Uh, can you repeat the questions? Yin or yang? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, tang good. Uh. I'm not Is... so sure. It, 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 uh, maybe if the person you want to... Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> TCM always emphasize yin yang kiao he, mean balancing of yin and yang. Yeah. There is no such thing as yin is better than yang or yang is better than yin in terms okay. of tang, you know. So a healthy tang should be firstly is light pink in color, a thin coat of a uh, thin layer of coat, thin layer of white coat, no any marking on along the, the tongue or on the tongue that is considered a healthy tongue and this uh, yin yang kiao he is yin yang balanced tongue. Okay. okay, I hope that answered the questions. Yes, okay, I think so far, uh, the three speakers, as and when, they, they, uh, they already um, uh, answered most of the questions. Uh. So let me see, is there any new add-up? Because I just saw something coming in. Okay, okay, no more questions already. Good, over to you, host, okay. Jocelyn. Mm. Great. Okay, so we pretty much come to the end of our sharing. But if you found all our, so I know a lot during the during the whole session, a lot of people were asking about the course details. It was coming, so don't worry. Now I'm sharing. Okay, so if you guys really enjoyed what Catherine shared about nutrition and uh health and how what I what are some of the things you should eat, what are some of the protein uh the different kind of nutrition classes and all that stuff, uh, you can really come on board to join her class happening on the 9th of October, as well as one more class uh, on the 12th of November. This is a one-day course from 9 to 5 p.m. Lah. So after the 80% subsidy, if you are above 50 years old, um, the course fee is only 47 and 25 cents. And if you have additional skills future credits left that you have not tapped on, you can actually use to offset. So for people who are 
are under 50 fret not it's just that you don't have the 80 percent subsidy but you can still sign up and use your skills future credit to uh, register for it so if you have any uh if you'd like to find out more details uh my colleague is actually pasting the links in the chat box right now uh alternatively you can whip out your qr code scanner to uh be linked to the right website to find out more details about the course Okay, and next up, I think we really enjoyed what uh, Ken was sharing just now. He has so much, so much information to share with you guys. Uh, he was sharing, he can go on and on and on. So his course is a little bit longer, it's just two days, uh, and it's happening over um, on the 7th and on the 21st of October, as well as the next class happening on the 18th of November and 2nd of December. Okay, and his course fee, because it's two days, it's slightly a bit steeper, but it's still quite affordable. It's only at 68 dollars and four cents after 80 percent uh, national silver academy subsidy so this one similarly can be offset with uh, your skills future so you can scan here or you can check out our chat box for the right link to go and check out more information and register yourself and of course last but not least we have mr mervin chan uh, his course is actually really popular i would say so um so his next class is happening on the 23rd of october and uh, his fees is only 47 and 25 cents after the subsidies lah. okay and with that i think we pretty much come to the end of this thing so uh just one last thing to add is that all these sessions will be held in our physical venue at peninsula plaza which is opposite city hall mrt station now but rest assured all the classes are actually kept to small groups uh and are conducted in adherence to all the safe distancing guidelines which means that uh, every class now we already have to downsize uh, because limited slots per session okay so be sure to sign up asap and with uh yeah and so we've come to the end of the session uh, and yeah, so thank you very much for being such wonderful audiences today. I really hope to see you guys in our physical uh, session soon. Yeah, and if you have any queries, please feel free to reach out to us via any of this medium. You can email us, contact us, and just now I was sharing about WhatsApp. You can just add us onto your WhatsApp and just say hello to us and you will receive regular updates about our courses happening soon. <laughs> Okay, and thank you so much once again for being such a uh, wonderful audience. Okay, I hope to see you guys really very, very, very soon. So you may